County Finance and Budget Committee meeting for Monday, April 11, 2016, the order. The clerk, please call the roll. Calling the roll, Mr. Greenspan? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones is absent. Mr. Harrison? Mr. Harrison is absent. Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron? Mr. Schron is absent. Ms. Brown? Here. We have a quorum. Very good. Thank you. And let the record reflect that Mr. Harrison has requested um, an excused absence. Uh, do we have any public comment related to the agenda? No, Mr. Chair, no one signed in. Okay, before us are the March 28, 2016 minutes. If there are no amendments to the minutes, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Motion is made. Is there a second? Second. I may, I'm sorry, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Uh, but we have no matters referred to committee. We're actually here today with our fiscal officer to get an update on the uh, 2015 results and then a 2016 update on our financial uh, situ uh, status. So I'll turn it over to um, Mr. Kennedy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I will like to walk you through a brief PowerPoint presentation that summarizes um, some of the detail that was previously provided and would be happy to answer any questions as we move along or at the end of the uh, <clears throat> presentation. Uh, our budget director, Ms. Keenan, is on vacation, so anything that either myself or the OBM staff that, that are here can't answer, we'll promise to get back to you as soon as possible um, by the end of this week. So with that, I'd like to just move forward into the presentation, and uh, for everybody's general knowledge, uh, this is based on uh, the theory that we're just going to give you the highlights of the key areas of the county revenue expenditures and the status of our fund reserves and to remind everyone that these results are reported on an unaudited cash basis as of the end of 2015. Just as a side note, the audit for 2015 has started. Um, we're on schedule. We're actually a little bit ahead of schedule this year, which is good. Um, but that field work has commenced already, just for everybody's general knowledge. Moving into the numbers um, for the general fund, and this is uh, not inclusive of the quarter percent sales tax revenue. Um, one other highlight to, to let you know, the 2015 actual expenses do not include carryovers. There's another chart later in the presentation uh, that highlights 2015 and 2016, and that carryover amount is included in there. That's why those numbers would be somewhat different. Uh, the 2015 revised budget amount is uh, what was represented in the annual budget update at the end of the year. Uh, so those numbers are consistent with what has recently been recorded. And for the 2016 original budget, those amounts include the original budget that is, was passed by council but does not include any amended appropriations that have gone through any fiscal agendas. Uh, so to move through the, some of the highlights uh, of those numbers, the general fund ended 2015 with an operating deficit of $16.3 million. Uh, the deficit decreased during 2015 uh, we had a projected deficit of $32.7 million at the beginning of the year. Uh, that was reduced to $26.2 at mid-year. Uh, so we were pleased that the, the end result was down to a level of 16.3. That operating deficit uh, does not include $34 million in general fund subsidies that were used to support deferred maintenance projects included in the capital improvement plan and to, uh, to eliminate negative cash balances uh, they were reflected throughout the course of the year as reserve on balance, and we are confident that we have those up to date and um, no more negative balances as of today. Mr. Kennedy, can I ask a question? Yes, sir. And if anyone has a question at any point, if you don't mind, I'd just like to have more of an open dialogue. Sure. In, in, your, in your bullet point number two, um, the deficit excludes 34. So if you take the 34 million plus the 16, is that where you get the fifty million that you reflected on the previous slide? Yes, but but the the, the is the fifty million cash basis 
So because if I'm reading note the second note, the deficit here of the $34 million is deferred maintenance on projects that were not yet paid, correct? So we had we had not we have not incurred the thirty four million on a cash basis. We have not did not incur the thirty four million. Is that correct? I believe you're correct on that. Yes, sir. So our true our true operating deficit on a cash basis is sixteen point three. I believe where the fifty million is coming from is if you take the demand on reserves that was unspent that are encumbered for the next year. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make just clarify that. All right, thank you. Please continue. So moving forward, the ending cash balance in the general fund for 2015 was 116.2 million, and that represents 30.2% of total expenditures. Uh, here's another chart that shows uh, the general fund revenue for 2015. Uh, just a couple of highlights here. Uh, the sales and use tax does not include the quarter percent tax that's allocated for the hotel and convention projects. Uh, other governmental funds increase substantially. The excise tax um, is dropped off in 2016 projection because of the dedication of the excise tax bonds. So there's no money coming in for that or a limited amount. Um, and there's several other adjustments that I'll, I'll address, uh, particularly um, associated with the 2016 budget, where we've realized that some of those budget estimates were off uh, based on a, a review right as of today. So I'll, I'll mention those in a moment. So, so, yeah, Mr. Miller. Am I correct that the, uh, the quarter percent sales tax and the uh, and the general fund operating are now totally segregated into two different funds as, as the way you're, you're currently uh, accounting for it? Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you. And, and on that point, then, when we look at the sales and use tax, those are all exclusive of the quarter percent? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. So moving... Th through to the next slide, this gives a visual representation of some of the information associated with revenue. Our 2015 revenue totaled $335 million. Uh, that was less than 1%, uh, or, I'm sorry, it was 1% more than the budget of 333.7 and 1.2% less than the 338.9 million collected in 2014. Sales and use tax is our biggest source of revenue. It represents approximately 61% of the general fund revenue. That increased 3.5% over 2014 to 204 .4 million. Again, that, this excludes the quarter percent. On average, our sales tax collections have increased 4% each year over the previous year since 2012. Our budget assumed uh, the same rate of growth. I will address uh, it later in the presentation what is going on currently with sales tax collections because we have not seen that rate of growth this year. If we move through to some of the highlights of the results operations in terms of the general fund, our fines and forfeiture revenue decreased 22% from $10.6 million in 2014 to $8.2 million in 2015. Uh, it's attributed to a $2 million one-time settlement that was received in 14 that, that put that comparison um, a little up skewed. And there was an overall decrease in court activity, particularly there was a substantial decrease in foreclosures as compared to prior years. Case filings have steadily declined over the past five years from a total of just under 50,000 in 2011 to an amount just under 40,000 in 2015. That's roughly a decrease of 20%. Uh, the staffing levels in the clerk's office have decreased 32% over that same time period. So if, if I can just ask just clarification. <clears throat> so foreclosures are down and case filings are down and that, that is the primary reasons for the decline in fines and forfeitures? Yes. Okay, okay, thank you. 
Some other highlights in terms of the general fund revenue, other intergovernmental revenue increased by 3% to 18.7 million in 2015. That was driven by an increase in the reimbursement rate um, from the state public defender. Those costs, that reimbursement rate changed from 40 to 48% in July 2015. And I think we've done a better job in pursuing those reimbursements over the course of 2015 dedicated some staff to that. I know that was a concern uh, that was raised last year and I think we're on course to maximize our reimbursements um, in, in terms of public defender. Other tax revenue de decreased 20% from the 10.8 million collected in 2014. Um, that can be attributed, to, as I said, to the excise, excess, excise tax collections, which represent 8.6 million of the $8.7 million total collected in 2015. With the passage of the new legislation in 2015, uh, that revenue will no longer go to the general fund, but it's earmarked to pay the debt service on those excise tax bonds that were issued in December. That was roughly about $62 million. Uh, that was for the improvements at Gateway. Our investment earnings increased $3.5 million in 2015. Uh, the 2014 total, the uh, actual total of $447,000 reflected uh, the premium amortization associated with long-term investments purchased uh, by the county treasurer. Uh, those no longer will be occurring. Um, so the, the premiums on, on those prior investments have been fully amortized as of the end of 2015. So our 2016 budget assumes interest earnings would increase to 5.1 million, and I think year to date uh, we're doing a little better than that. I will um, touch on that later in the presentation. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Miller, Director, uh, when you talk about excise tax, are you referring to what we commonly refer to as sin tax? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, the next slide is a, is a summary of uh, general operating fund expenditures for 2015. Um, these numbers do not include, <clears throat> excuse me, any carryovers. Um, so the total there at the bottom gives you a comparison as to both the 2014 actuals and the 2015 revised budget. Any questions on? No. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. Director, when you say it does not include any carryovers, are, are you saying that you uh, you backed out both the carryovers in and the carryovers out so that you kind of have an apples to apples comparison? Is that what you did? 2015 includes anything that was paid in 2015. The 2016 budget does not include the carryovers that were not paid for items that we expect to pay this year that originally were anticipated to be paid in 2015. Okay. So, so to that, can you go back to that slide, please? So what you're saying is the 389 of the budget, the revised 15 budget, had encumbrances, that was all in, that was cash out and the anticipate, what we anticipated at the beginning of the year to be paid out in 15. When we look at the actual number, the difference of 25 million is our, our um, that 363 only represents cash out. Paid. Paid, yes. right, can't, yeah. So the difference are items that were not paid, just looking between the budget and the actual. Items that were anticipated to be paid in 15 that were not paid in 15. Correct. Okay, got it. Thank you. Uh, this next slide just gives a graphic representation on a pie chart of how our expenses are broken out. Uh, you can see the majority of the expenses, 66%, are related to justice and public safety. Uh, development is 1%. Social services, 2%. Uh, we have subsidies to other funds. That's about $22 million. That's uh, 6%. General government is 16%. And miscellaneous expenditures are 9%. But 
but again, as, as we've talked about during the budget process, the justice and public safety makes up the lion's share of the general fund expenses. Can I, can I ask a question back? The, 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 this is general fund, and on the previous slide, are these act, uh, I'm trying to reconcile the numbers. So you got three, 385.3, but on the previous slide, the total actual was 363, and the budget was 389. Where did the 385 come from? I believe this slide includes the $22 million in transfers to other funds. Uh, okay. Okay, thank you. At the close of the year for 2015, there was a budget surplus. That's when you compare the appropriation levels with the actual expenses. The 26.3 million, um, I've summarized some of the highlights of what that's comprised of. Personal services, which is salary and benefits. Um, that surplus was 5.9 million, attributed to vacancies in county agencies, including a number of director positions that were not filled by year end. Payroll costs increased in 2015. From 2014, if you remember, because of the cost of the 27th pay period that hit last year, uh, that's estimated to have cost $7.4 million in the general fund. There was also a 2% cost of living adjustment and we had a number of bargaining unit increases throughout the year. For contracts, uh, there was a $9.4 million surplus. Um, $2.3 million of that was attributed to transfers to the city of Cleveland and the RNC payment. Uh, those were due in December. Both were paid in January of this year. Additionally, there was a $750,000 allocation for the Metro Health property insurance that ended up being transferred to the HHS levy budget. Two and a half million dollars results from assigned council expenses and common police court coming in less than what was budgeted and one million dollars uh, surplus reflects the payment to Playhouse Square that was budgeted originally but was never paid during the course of the year. Okay, Mr. If I can ask a question. Yes. The, the, uh, getting back to the first bullet point under contracts, what, the RNC payment, was that, that was five million dollars or was that two and a half million? In total? Well, that, well, in here you're referring to an amount that, that was budgeted to be paid in December but wasn't paid until January. So, right, is that what we're saying here? Yeah, I believe, I believe the payment to the RNC was $500,000. $500,000. So that will, from a budget perspective, show as a, as a deficit in 16. In 16. Because it wasn't budgeted in 15. Because uh, it was budgeted in 15. The, the other, on the... On the line item above or in the heading where it says there was a budget surplus, you're just merely talking about the expenses were favorable to what was a, the expense budget was, correct? What was appropriated, yes. What was appropriated, because, because earlier you talked about there being a $16 million deficit, but that's overall um, revenues versus expenses. When you're, what you're talking about here are just expenses, correct? Expenses versus appropriations. Okay, thank you. And there, there's a number of other uh, major issues that contributed to uh, this, the appropriation versus expense surplus. In terms of other operating, that total is roughly 5.1 million. Uh, 1.8 million resulted from the transfer of the contract for our new real property tax system, which was originally assigned to the general fund. That's been a move, moved over to the real estate assessment fund. Uh, $1.7 million from the savings attributed to the decision to eliminate the college savings program. $430,000 um, reflected general election costs or less than budgeted. Uh, the Board of Elections has a tendency to budget inappropriately so for worst case scenarios, but uh, realize the savings in terms of their appropriation expenses last year. And there was $200,000 in unspent funds that were uh, provided originally for cash matches to various municipalities for firefighter grants. Um, this has been included in the 2016 budget that $200,000 last year was not spent. I have a, I have a question. On the, on the college savings college savings account, the 1.7, so we appropriated in 14, 13 and 14, $2 million per year 
for that program, and then that money was to be transferred back pursuant to the revocation of the program. Are we getting more than 1.7 back? Because wasn't it a million and a half for scholarships that was deposited in Key Bank, and then that money was going was pursuant to the expiration of the legislate uh, expiration of the program. That money was supposed to come back to the county. Has that money come back in 15, or are we expecting that in 16? As, as far as I know, but I will double check on that, but I do not believe we've received that money yet. Okay, so the 1.7 was just due to the fact we canceled the program. But I I thought this, that I'm looking at Mr. King, I thought that under the legislation, kindergartners could apply through the end of 15. And then, was that correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, the legislation provided that, un, that uh, eligible participants in the program could through the end of 2015 um, ask the county to transfer the money in their college savings account to an eligible 529 mm -hmm. fund and um, I know that we did we did have some takers on that but obviously not all of them were uh, came and did that so there there likely is still uh, money sitting in those funds somewhere but so, I, okay so knowledge. and we did we did two years we did one and a half million $2 million, but $1.5 million each year into the key bank. Cool. Uh, I, that might not be a question for you, but the, the program was two years. I believe that's correct, yeah. So I'm just curious if, if the 1.7 maybe was a savings in the fact that we, because the legislation happened in April, that we just stopped, didn't make the transfer, assuming that we had enough money in the bank already to handle any requests, and then at some point in 16, the balance would be, would be coming back. Is that what we think is going to we to, I guess I'm looking at Mr. Kennedy. Is that what yeah. we think is going to happen? That's what I think. Thank but you, Mr. King. I'll take a look at it and send okay. something back to the committee to let you know for sure. Okay. But I, I don't believe we've received any of that money yet. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, this next slide just gives a history of the general fund expenditures uh, from 2000 through the prospective 2016 budget. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about that. There was several several years there that uh, expenses varied substantially. Um, and as you can see, 2016's um, down from what our 2015 expenses were. And I will talk a little bit about that later on. Moving on to the levy funds. Uh, for 2015, uh, the Health and Human Services Levy Fund projects balances as shown on this chart. Our balance to expenditures for 2015 was 24.5%. Our estimate for the 2016 budget is at 19%. For 2015, the levy revenue totaled $231.1 million. That ended up being 1.6% less than the budget uh, and 0.1% greater than the 2014 actual total of 230.8 million. Uh, the decrease is reflective of the county's decision not to complete a tax lien sale in 2015. I believe the treasurer is on schedule this year to have a tax lien sale somewhere in September or October. Uh, we're hopeful of that because that could obviously add to uh, the amount of funds that are uh, realized by the levy. Uh, just as a side note, those 2016 levy proceeds could be affected by the Board of Revision filings. For the committee's um, knowledge, we received roughly 9,200 official filings um, on or before March 31st, which was the deadline. Uh, so we don't know what the schedule is yet for those to be resolved, but if there are valuation reductions, those could potentially impact that value as well. If, if, I, if I can, the, the tax lien sales that were anticipated in 15 that didn't happen, you mentioned in September is when the treasurer expects the next tax lien sale to occur. Will we, will obviously those that were in, let me ask, I shouldn't say obviously, are we anticipating those that should have been sold in 15 will be sold in 16? I believe that's correct, sir. And then so in the 16 budget, did we contemplate effectively the, the 15 sales being, the 15 projected sale in the 16 revenue number? 
or should we anticipate a, surp a surplus in revenue because we're effectively having two years worth of lean sales in one year? That I'm not sure about. If I could, let yeah. me check that and get back to the committee. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Miller. Director, am I correct that we got uh, many more Board of Revision filings this year than uh, than the last couple years because this year, because last year was when the triennial update was done? Uh, yes, sir, Councilman. The, the last year was the triennial update. Um, I believe that I can get you some statistics on what, what the filings have been the last couple of years. Um, we did have uh, a large number of informal complaints in the September, October period time period that were resolved prior to official Board of Revision filings. But I think the good news is that the BOR filings that we did receive was a little bit less than what we were anticipating. So I'm assuming they can handle that process a little more efficiently. But I'll get you some statistics on the last couple of years. Okay, thank you. If I remember, I'll look to Mr. King just because he sits in on those meetings. I think we were expecting 12,500 filings. So that number sticks out in my mind for some reason. So he's tied up. But we'll, I, you'll, get, you'll get to us those numbers, but I believe that 9,200 is less than what the Board of Revisions was anticipating. I believe the last estimate that we talked about was somewhere between twelve and fourteen thousand was the expected number, but it, it came in at slightly over ninety two hundred. Uh, moving back to to the slide here, uh, two thousand fifteen levy expenditures were seventeen and a half million dollars under the budget of two hundred thirty seven point two million and $12.3 million less than the actual 2014 total. 2015 levy, levy subsidies were offset by a drawdown of $9.1 million in the combined public assistance funds. That was not anticipated in the original budget. And at the close of 2015, there was a balance of $35 million in the combined public assistance funds. The 2016 budget includes a drawdown of $23.8 million. Um, and that, that chart at the bottom um, portrays our ending balances um, back to the year 2010. If I can ask a question on the PA balance at the end of 16. Well, let me just ask this. It, it shows a drawdown of 238 do you know what the anticipated inflows of cash into the PA funds, or is that 23 point at the net reduct, net impact on the PA funds at the end of 16? I believe the 23.8 was the net. Okay. So that'll leave about 11.2 11, 11 million in the PA fund? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, some Chair. notable oh, Mr. I'm Mr. sorry. Miller. Uh, can you tell us how much of that $23.8 million drawdown in PA funds is one time? I, I know that the, uh, the money for the early childhood is a major one time, uh, and I'm sure there's more. Uh, Mr. Miller, I, I believe four, uh, roughly $14.3 million was a one-time reduction that was included in the budget, and then there was about nine, a little over $9 million in various council amendments. That makes up the $23 million. So $14.3 was one-time adjustments to that total. Mm -hmm. Just as a point of clarity, when you say council amendments, you mean amendments approved by council, but were they council initiated amendments or council approved amendments? Uh, I believe they were council approved amendments. But do you know? But did the administration initiate them, or was it a combination of the administration? I don't recall the specifics of the it, nine million. I I would have to get back to you. Okay, I'd just like to know the origin of the nine million. Yes, Mr. Miller, uh, Director. Uh, could you just get us a, a breakdown on the $23.8 million? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, 
Some variances of note in the levy budget um, relative 2015 results operations for children and family services. Um, the, it ended up $13 million less than the budget. That was attributed to a combination of an $8.3 million drawdown of the cash balance of the fund and a budget surplus driven by attrition to the employee base. Juvenile court was $2 million less than the budget. That reflects a $1.5 million drawdown of the cash balance in the fund and a budget surplus of $1 million resulting from additional funding provided for residential placements that did not take place. In terms of administration for HHS, uh, that total was $880,000 less than the budget, uh, driven by, again, some attrition in the HHS information technology budget, and there was a vacancy in the deputy chief of staff for the HHS position. Children with medical handicaps were came in at $840,000 less than the budget. That the program is budgeted based on the award of amount of $2.8 million. Those expenses are for fully reimbursed by the Ohio Department of Health through the County Board of Health. Uh, so they came in under budget for 2015. Director. Yes, sir. Mr. Miller. Mr. Chairman, Director. On the, uh, on the juvenile court, it, it's... Uh, it's been unusual for the juvenile court to come in under budget in the past few years. My question is, uh, what are we looking at in terms of 2016? What's the current projection? Uh, Councilman Miller, currently the last estimates that I've looked at show that we're over budget somewhere in the vicinity of two to $300,000, primarily driven by overtime in the detention center. Um, we're hoping that we can take some kind of action to reduce that or, or at least keep that amount stable through the balance of the year. Uh, we'll have more information when the OBM completes that first quarter update. Given the size of their budget, that's not a huge variance. Yeah, I think so far we're pleased with it, even though it is over, but again, well, we're going to keep our eye on it and make sure that it doesn't expand any further than that. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next slide just shows a pie chart representation of the expenses uh, associated with the levy fund. Children Family Services accounts for 30% of the budget. Metro and Adams um, each are roughly 18%. And the remainder of the expenditures are distributed amongst job and family services, early childhood, senior and adult services, homeless services, and various other HHS programs. Here's a history of expenses associated with the levy. Um, you can see there was a spike in 2009. Uh, those, that increase was associated with the early retirement incentive program. Um, where the county had to absorb considerable costs for leave payouts. Um, expenses dropped then considerably each year. There was a low spends in 12 and 13 due to some restrictions put in place by the administration, um, but things have leveled out now in 2016, 2017 budget are relatively stable um, and hope to stay that way moving forward. I'll, I'll ask the, the question. So in 13, what was what were the administrative decisions that were made? I don't... I, Councilman, I, I don't have a lot of detail on that. My background that was presented to me was that basically there was freezes on funding and hiring and that sort of thing that kept the expenses low. I'd be happy to look into that and get the committee a more detailed response. Okay, thank you. Yes, please. We'll continue. And uh, that's a summary of the 2015. Um, I'd just like to take a couple of moments to talk about 2016. Um, the, the estimates uh, that, that we have right now are representative of what we've actually incurred through the month of February. Uh, as I just mentioned, OBM is going to work on a detailed analysis of the first quarter update, which I believe is due by May 15th. 
In terms of the operating fund for 2016, um, we're projecting an operating deficit $6.37 million. Um, that's primarily driven by a revenue shortfall. Expenditures are expected to total $379.2 million, which is 6% under the $403 million budget. That $403 million budget uh, for 16 is different than um, what was represented earlier because that includes the carryover balance to, to start out. So that's our entire projected expense level for the year. Uh, we, we have some issues with revenue. Uh, again, it's it's projected to total 372.9 million. Can move forward here, which is 13.1 million or 3.4 percent under budget. Uh, revenue associated with fines and forfeitures is nearly three and a half million dollars under budget. It reflects the combination of a revenue estimate that we've now determined was probably a little bit too high and the continued steady decline in case filings that we talked about earlier associated with 2014 and 2015. Um, investment earnings is projected to be $2 million more than the budget amount. That's attributed to the, a change in the county's investment strategy and a slight in interest rate increase that we're going to realize in 2015. So that's good news that we'll get a little more in investment earnings. Our property tax revenue is estimated to be approximately $2.6 million more than budgeted. Uh, there was an overestimate of the impact of moving the inside millage to, to account for the debt service. Uh, the budget assumed that, the original budget assumed that would result in a $5 million decrease to the general fund revenue, but the actual impact currently is estimated to total about $2.5 million. So that's a 2 and a half to $2.6 million increase in terms of budget revenue. Uh, sales tax is the largest component of revenue for our budget. Uh, it's estimated to be under budget at this particular point in time by roughly $12 million. Uh, we're up on a year to year basis from last year, just 0.03%. Our current estimates assume that those collections that we've incurred and in the, in the March collection was similar. The, so we're projecting that the sales tax revenue will stay flat through the end of the year. Um, we're looking into some reasons as to why that occurred. There has not been any kind of major weather incident, economic downturn. There's not nothing that would have given us any kind of um, premonition or indication that sales tax growth would not have been consistent with prior years, but uh, we're in contact with some folks on the state level. We're hopeful that there may be a backlog in terms of collections. Um, sometimes I've told everybody I have a lot of experience with income tax collections. Sometimes when those deposits aren't made on a timely basis, uh, can skew the monthly collections. So we'll find out really by the end of this week when the April collection, uh, the distribution information is posted by the state and I will advise the committee as to what those numbers are. But if that number is consistent with what we've seen for the first three months, um, then we probably don't have a reason to believe that things are gonna pick up on a total basis. So we'll be under um, for the year. As I said, currently we're estimating that shortfall to be about $12 million. If, if, I, if I can, um couple questions but I'll stay on this point is it possible that the reason we saw increases in sales tax revenue were attributable to um, well, well let me ask this when did the Amazon tax go into effect was that in 15 I, I believe that was in 15 but I'm not sure it took effect immediately I know the legislation was mm -hmm. um, I'll have to check into that but I I don't know the details on what we've realized from that. And then also, well, this this we, we know, we just don't know the amount, but the Medicaid premium tax went into went into effect sometime, I believe, in 13. So we, so we started seeing incremental increases in that year over year, which was not necessarily due to increased increased base tax, but a broadening of the base or a new tax that was added to it that 
that should have maybe been leveled off in the projections instead of anticipating a compounded growth. Correct? Correct. It, it, it could have been considered like extraordinary income right. because it wasn't consistent with historically what the base was that comprised sales tax. Right, right. I point to um, and now in, in the budget projections, though, we've got at least one major extraordinary event happening in Cleveland this year with the convention. That was never budgeted as a specific factor, but it could be a contributing factor to leveling off some of the deficiencies we're seeing now, correct? That's correct. But given the short duration of that, I'm not right. sure what we can identify as to right. the impact of that. But we can anticipate it. That it was not well, we could state that it was not included in the projection. So any increase as a result of that activity would be positive to the sales tax. It could help offset the okay. reduction that we're projecting at this point. So and I the guess. World Yo-Yo Championships in August will have a positive impact as well. And the Cavaliers as well. And the Cavaliers, that's right. And the Cavaliers was ne was not projected either. Uh, it, it wasn't projected any differently than last year because they've been on that run for the past year. So there isn't any kind of extraordinary income projection associated with that specific to this year. Okay. I have a question. Going back to slide 19, just real quick. Because if I was to look at this slide in a vacuum, and in slide 19, it projects that we budgeted an operating deficit. That's not what we budgeted, though, correct? Correct. Okay, so can you explain what the what what this represents then? The 2016 budget would be the original budget that was mm -hmm. approved by council, plus the carryover expenses that should have been paid in 15 that have have to go through as budget amendments for this year to be paid with the money that was not spent last year. So this should maybe have an asterisk explaining that it wasn't the budget that was approved but includes carryover encumbrances which were not included correct i just want to make i don't want somebody yeah. to look at this and, and say hey wait a minute you guys budgeted a deficit that's not which is not an accurate statement correct yeah i would agree with you we can okay. footnote it okay all right thank you mr miller director uh do we get do we get paid by the state on the sales tax just once a month or is it more frequent than that? Uh, Council, I believe it's once a month. Okay, and uh, Mr. Chairman, Director, to uh, to follow up on on about the carryover encumbrances. If, if you said that we carried over twenty two million into 2016. It, I believe that's a number, yes, sir. If we have, if we have the same number that's carried over in, into 2017, well, then it's kind of a wash. But, but if we have a year in which, uh, in which we carry over either, either a significantly smaller or a significantly larger amount than coming in then then we carry over going forward well then the, the carryover factor would kind of skew the the budget numbers as as to how you're doing operationally is that correct that is correct and i believe the the other complicating factor is the way that our budget system works that it doesn't account for prior year expenses out of a prior year budget um, that's hopefully that's a priority for us in terms of the implementation of the ERP, because I think that will eliminate some of the confusion in terms of how um, we represent cash expenses versus appropriations. Um, currently, because of the limitations of the budget system, we're, we can't carry forward um, encumbered expenses without amending the budget. So we should eliminate that prospect um, with successful implementation of the ERP program. And uh, Mr. Chairman, Director, on, on the sales tax, uh, we could survive if it was flat for one year, but if it started 
being flat every year, it would uh, cause a lot of big problems, especially on uh, on debt service. Uh, is there any evidence that anything has has changed from the prior uh, prior four years that were creating uh, annual increases? Uh, do we think this is a one-time anomaly, or do you think do we think that that there's a new normal? Uh, Councilman, I don't really have an answer for you on that. We're still looking at that. Obviously, last fall when we were doing the projections, um, we, we were pretty comfortable with the fact that we thought that the trend, even though we knew it wasn't going to increase as dramatically as it had in the past because of some some of those one-time infusions, um, we were not expecting the, the increase to be as marginal as it is right now. As I said, I'm trying to get some information from the state. Uh, the state's got a little better handle on their projections in terms of data, uh, but I agree with you. If, if it's a long-term trend, since this source of revenue represents 60 some odd percent of our total revenue in the general fund, um, it, it would place some additional burdens on us. But uh, we'll know better by the end of this week when we get the distribution. Um, we're hopeful that maybe we can have some catch up of some delinquent collections. Um, but if the number comes in consistent with April's traditionally, I believe one of the lower months that in terms of sales tax, so we, I'll, I'll let the committee know as soon as we get that information. Thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Please continue. Uh, the next slide is just a summary of um, the 2016 projections for the Health and Human Services Levy Fund. Again, as we talked about earlier, uh, there's some potential there for additional revenue, and, and I will... Um, get back to the committee on, on how much of that was included in the original projection that would be associated with any um, tax lien sales that are conducted by the treasurer's office and the fact that none were done last year. And then again, we, we would have to keep our eye on what the, any decisions coming from the board of revision. But you can see that our, our estimate has been slightly reduced in terms of revenue. Um, 2016 budget was originally projecting 237 million. Um, our 2016 estimate is now 227.6. So that'll end up, even with a lower expenditure amount, um, reducing our ending balance to 38.4 million dollars and dropping that to 16.4 percent in terms of a balance to expenditures. The shortfall in revenue re results from a $1 million decrease in the first half collections. Again, part of that is associated with tax lien sales. Uh, the budget had originally assumed a $6 million increase in revenue. The expenditure surplus reflects budget surpluses in various HHS levies, agencies. Mr. Miller. Director, uh Given how flat uh, property tax revenue has been in in the last several years, what was the basis for assuming a six percent increase uh, year over year in in the budget? Uh, Councilman, I'd, I'd have to go back and look at the backup for the original budget, but I'd be happy to do that and get to you. I don't want to give you the wrong answer. Okay, I would I would like you to do that. Thank you. Please continue. And then the, this final slide just combines everything for all funds basis for the entire county. Uh, our 2016 estimate reflects a balance to expenditures of 35.1%. Um, ending cash balance, 521.5 uh, million. We have a $1.39 billion revenue estimate <coughs> with expenses of $1.48 billion. Um, the variances there are shown to you to compare to the original budget. Revenues are down uh, a little more than 
4.2%, and expenditures will increase 6.4%, um, and our balance is up 8.4% as a result of those two. That is the summary there. I, if there's any additional questions, we can... Mr. I have one additional question. Mr. Miller. And my question is on the last slide. Could you put that last slide back up there? Great. Uh, I know that the... Uh, the all funds budget is not something that we normally pay pay a great deal of attention to but uh, but the uh, the 94 million dollar uh, shortfall in in the 2016 estimate and and the 135 million in the budget that those are pretty large numbers and I'm I'm wondering if you could tell us a little more uh, uh, what results in that, and and uh, and how much concern you have about that? Is it uh, things more of a timing or temporary nature, or or is there something there that we should be concerned about, uh, Councilman? That those funds include a variety of different trust and agency funds, um, of which revenue and expenses come in because of timing issues and fluctuations. Um, I'd like to propose that I give you a kind of like a separate write-up on that so I can give you a little more of the detail. Um, I, I don't want to give you the explanation for the $94 million uh, without having a chance to look at the detail of the numbers, but I'd be happy to get that to you. Yes, that, that would be fine. I'm sure you can get us more information if you, uh, if you do a little work on it. So that's good. Okay, I will provide you. that. Mr. Kennedy, if I, if I could on that point, we talk about the expenditure line. Where, that is, is that where the carryover encumbrances would ultimately end up as, a, as an expenditure in the current year? Yes. And, and the, there would not be any corresponding revenue with that because that revenue would have been sitting in the reserve, correct? Correct. So to Mr. Miller's point, part of, part of this is not necessarily due to expense current year expenses on a cash basis exceeding current year revenue it's a cash basis report which reflects income in cash in cash out cash out includes previous year encumbrances that are being paid in this year or anticipated to be paid whereby the revenue was realized in a previous year correct that's correct okay all right it might just be a presentation clarification to, to reflect that because I had the same concerns as to yeah. the 94, 94. This is a, on a, I think we have to keep in mind it's on a cash basis. Um, I have a question. So in the, in, the, in the package that we received, which is not included in here, and maybe this is the preliminary. You know, the this results was, operations. Yeah, the, yes. Um, we, we've talked consistently about the, the, the percentage. <coughs> you know, we have to be up above 25%, but I... Believe, you know, it's, that's what the ordinance states. This 24.4 that's reflected here in a document dated March 1st is, is using the total expenditure number in the formula and not the total operating expenditure, which is what the ordinance calls for in calculating the percentage. Either way, it's below 26%. And the reason I bring that up, Mr. Miller had legislation introduced, which was adopted that said that if we get within 1% of the threshold, we then must, the county must then present a plan. Um, are, are, we, are we at that point now where that plan needs to be created? I, I believe we're looking at what the first quarter would produce. Okay. So that would be by May 15th, roughly five weeks from now. Okay, and then we have, Mr. Miller, fresh 180 days from the date in which for a plan to be submitted, was it six months? Or was it 120 days? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I, I think it was 180. 100, there's, a, there's a time period in which a plan needs to be submitted. I just want us to be cognizant of the correct percentage so we know where we're working from. I mean, even if we were to base it back on on the total operating expenditures on this report, 
for the general fund net, the quarter percent, it's 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 a twenty five point eight two. So we're just we're still below the twenty six, cool. but um, just I, I just I just raised that as a question, not as a as a as a directive, just as a point of point of attention. I will take a look at that. Okay, that's great. Any other questions, Mr. Kennedy? Did you have anything else to add, Mr. Chairman? Oh, Mr. Miller, I'm sorry. I... Uh, just a comment. Uh, I think. Uh, this is the first time that we had uh, had any updated current year projections prior to the first quarter update. So, uh, so I appreciate that, and it, it's helpful. Um, thank you, sir. I, but that is largely attributable to Maggie Keenan and her staff. I think we're close to being fully staffed in OBM. Um, or as close as they've been in about three or four years. So the work product has picked up tremendously, and um, I could not understate the importance of getting this ERP system in because I think the integration of the accounting end of things um, to the budget side will greatly improve our reporting, make it more accurate, make it easier to disseminate to everyone. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Any comments? Okay, Mr. Kennedy, I want to thank you for your presentation today. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. Okay, is there any miscellaneous business? Hearing none, any other public comment? No, Mr. Chair. Okay, then this meeting is adjourned. Thank you.